Good morning, folks. We'll be taking a peek at space weather, including the expected CME impact and some new sunspots. We've got articles on the Amazon, on pre-volcanic electromagnetic signals, and yet another on solar forcing. But we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star. A bit of mid-level flaring occurred, but they were impulsive events. We had a filament snap at the departing limb on the north that'll be top right here. And early this morning, the CME we expected to impact finally did so. Let's take a peek at that solar wind. This is about what we had been expecting, not very dense, only modestly fast and hot in terms of the plasma character, was a minor impact and while the KP index has already risen to 4 this morning, those are unstable levels, it is doubtful we'll get significant geomagnetic storm activity from this one. So our solar watch returns to the corona. There are several plasma filaments you should be able to see here. The northern coronal hole should be returning to face Earth later this week and we have brand new sunspots on the south. We're watching those as well. You can see the bigger established active regions are turning towards the limb, but just south of the equator near center disk, a new group is born and the spots are multiplying and spreading quickly. We'll be keeping an eye open for flaring from that area in addition to destabilization of any of those plasma filaments. First up in the articles is this, oof. I'm surprised to see this in nature, about as woke of a publication as you can get. Shocking that extra plant food in the atmosphere hasn't devastated all these plants. Deforestation is an issue though, a much bigger threat. Good work there. Up next, we've got pre-volcanic signals in the total electron content of the upper atmosphere. We've seen this a lot for big earthquakes, but this is only the third time we've seen it for volcanoes third time's a charm. Whether it's big quakes or volcanoes, they give themselves away beforehand. Excellent bit of electromagnetic science there. Last but not least, folks, yet another paper that pegs changes in large-scale precipitation patterns to the 11-year sunspot cycle. It takes them until nearly the end of the paper to discuss the sun, with them mostly focusing on the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, but of course, we've seen over 20 papers in the last two decades on how the sun works the PDO, so at least it follows a logical progression. Plant food, solar activity, electromagnetic signals, and solar forcing of precipitation. Quietly, a solid day in science. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.